And so what am I making the point of? Not only did God choose you, or in this case, contextually in our Bible study, did God cho choose Abraham before he made all those mistakes that I just put in your handout, but Isaac's birth, which was his child, was not Abraham's doing. It was God's doing. Oh, you need to understand that better. Go in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 13. The book of John, not I, John, not 1 John, but the book of John, the gospel of John. Chapter number 1, verse number 13. Now, let's go back. In verse number 10, he's talking about Jesus. And remember I told you, this word world has multiple meanings. World can mean universe. World can mean people. World can mean the earth. And every one of those is in this 10th verse. Let's read it contextually and accurately in verse number 10. The he is Jesus. The subject is the word. In verse number 14, he's going to tell you how that word became visible. But right now, he's making another point. He was in the world. He was in the earth. That's what that means. And the universe was made by him. And the people didn't know him. He came unto his very own people, the Jewish people. And they didn't receive him. See, but as many as did receive him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, here's the point. This is the point. Remember, I told you Isaac's birth had nothing to do with Abraham. Abraham was just a tool used by God. Sarah was just a tool used by God. And an old tool, I ain't trying to talk about the woman. <laughs> praise the Lord. He was an old man too, praise the Lord. That's probably why he loved him so much, because he said, man, I was able to have a child at my age. But look what it says. Which were born, not of blood. What does that mean? Not of bloodline. You didn't come in connection with God because you were connected to this person who was connected to that person or who was connected to some degree of royalty. That's not how you came into the relationship with God. What did he say secondly? Not of the will of the flesh. That's not based upon some sexual fling. And then boom, here comes a baby. Or some planned child. You and your wife worked it out. No, that may be a, a situation where you may have had a birth naturally, but we're talking about a spiritual birth here. The last one, he says, nor the will of man. See, in the day in this age, men had a choice in the matter on how children would come or if they would not. But how many know your connection with God had nothing to do with anybody's choice but by God? Give God the praise. God is the one that chose you. I'm trying to give you some semblance of the awesomeness of the sovereignty of God, the power of God. Why is that so important in the day in which we live? Because you need to get outside of your little feeble brain as if you got something to bring to the table. You do have something to bring to the table. I think the Romans chapter 12 says it well. I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the very mercies of God, that here's what you do, that you present your bodies. Your bodies. Well, I think i got a whole lot to bring to the Lord in my mind. God don't need your mind. He had to renew your mind. And he's still doing it on a day-by-day -day basis. Holy acceptable unto God. This is only reasonable. That's what he means by reasonable service. And don't be conformed to the ways of this world system. That's what he means. But be transformed how? 
by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and that perfect and that acceptable will of God. Isaac's birth was not God, was, was God's doing, just like your rebirth was God's doing. Your mom and your daddy may have had you naturally, but God is the one that rebirthed you spiritually. So if you look at your slide, it says God's promises made it clear that his covenant is unchangeable, immutable. I need you to go to Exodus chapter 32. See, you got to, once you get in your mind that it ain't about you. Do you not know that oftentimes God may be holding back some favor upon your life that he wants to spread. He wants to spread it like wildfire. He wants to make his name famous through you and your family. But you think it's about you. And the more you become yielded to the purposes and the plan of God, then he says, oh, I know how to bless you. I know how to bless you because you won't hold that to yourself. You won't think it's about you. You just want my name to be famous. So give her all the resources. Give him everything they need. I, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. You just need the knowledge of me. 